Greetings and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be with you, isn't it? Today's session is about the art of communication and how we communicate in life. There's so much happening nowadays and uh, with all the protests, everyone coming out, voicing what they believe, what they think, and what they want. How do you communicate? There is many ways of communication. We know for a fact that how we communicate also matters. We communicate through body language, through gestures, the tone of voice, and we also Communicate with nonverbal communication, which is the way we look. We can look with so much compassion or anger and resentment and change the communication with the eyes into sadness. So today, the end of a beginning. The communication that we have is also with our facial expressions, the way we grunt and huff and puff, and the way we touch. Touch is one of the strongest way of communication. There's good touch, there's bad touch. There is the good look and what they call it, the evil look. And the evil look can also be a mischievous way of looking. So we can look at someone and give the look and yet mean something completely different. But it's not so much about the look, it's about the tone of voice and how we carry our body. So when you go into a group setting and you walk in, do you look for the people you know and then go and find them? Or do you find yourself walking in confident because you wanted to be there? You know, this entire thing about communication came about because of an invitation. One of my clients was quite upset that they were not invited to a family's get together, but it was not about his family. It was his family's family members. And he was wondering how come him and his family were not a part of it. And that even if they were to go, he would refuse to go because the person that his wife did not like are going to be there. So here's my question. Do you go places because the person who invited you, you honor them and you say, thank you. I am here for you and thank you for the invitation. Or do you go places or refuse to go because of someone you don't like or who has done you wrong or perhaps you broke up with are there. And how do we communicate this? You walk in and you sit with an attitude the entire day or you walk in proud, happy, content with yourself, and you are there for the person who invited you, the host. We all have a choice in life. And how we communicate is the best way to express how we feel. Because when you hold on to anger and resentment, what are you communicating with yourself? Because it's not about anyone else. It's about you. I believe 
how we communicate, how we behave, how we react. It's the another person can trigger it, but how we act and react is about us. It's our own behavior, our own reaction, and how we were either brought up or have come to manifest certain things. I know for a fact that when someone shuts down, my response to that is I let you be because that is how they communicate. But if I were expecting something and I needed an answer or a project had to be done within 24 hours, that shutdown does not work for me. Because no matter what we do in life, we also have to take responsibility. If we are at work and doing business, it is business time. Yes, we are human. But the boss, the company, has no time for attitude. They want the job done. Go ahead and do the job. And then you can go outside and have all the attitude and frustration and huff and buff and grunting that you want. Because bottom line comes back to what? Are you going to get paid? Or do you want the job? Or rad you rather give the huffing and puffing or the silent treatment? Because something did not sit well with you. And that's one of the things some people roar and others go into a shutdown. That is part of a communication. Another part of communication is how we want to be close to someone. The communication of, I like you. I am okay to be in the same distance with you. Or I rather keep my distance with you because there's something about you I reject. Or here is the nonverbal. Our body reacts to it. And frankly, there's something about them that we just don't want to be around. Here's another way of communication. Our body, our gut the inside feeling. When you bypass your ego, like my ego, when I let go of my ego, when I want to hone down to my authentic self, I also have to let go of fears and expectations. When I let go of the fight and flight and drop down from shallow breathing into my gut and sit and just hold and become still, that's when I get into my authentic self, the core self, and I begin to communicate with myself, with my body my wants and my desires. And then I can communicate with you so much better. The clarity of communication also comes from facial expression. We talked about that. Body movement. What are my hand gestures saying? Am I praying? Am I talking? Or am I putting my hand to stop whatever it is? And here's one thing you can do. I show this to so many of my clients. When we want to stop someone's energy, we put our hand up like this. And by putting the hand, it's like, talk to the hand. Oh, sorry, the hand is busy. And you mirror yourself. What is it that I want? What is it that I'm looking for? Who am I? Who am I? 
What do I want to express? And how do I want to be received? A part of communication is also the tonality of our voice. If I'm soft, I want to come across genuine. Because in my heart, everything that I say, that I am with you, my commitment to communicate with you each and every time is genuine information to share, to be helpful. And if I can make a difference in one person's life, then I've done my job. And I am good enough. The I in our life means I matter and I am enough. Instead of constantly wanting to talk and have that voice go round and about, fast paced. When we are excited, oh my God, excitement is one of the best things in life. Is that body movement showing all that energy in your life, showing all the excitement from your voice. When you want to share something and you can't wait for someone to have, to listen to it, to have it and express it and share the excitement with you, all that is incredible. But when we talk and run on sentences, on and on, on and on, on and on, guess what's going to happen? The person we are communicating with Stop. Because one of the best parts of communication is to pause and to listen. To listen to them and to listen to yourself. Expressions of your feelings. A part of it is to also pause so that you can hear yourself. Do I make sense? Am I conveying my message? Am I sharing my thoughts, ideas, and what I feel? February is coming. It is the month of communication, of love, and sharing compassion. The art of communication is also finding the art and the essence of sharing who you are, no matter race, color, religion, creed, sex, orientation, male, female. It doesn't matter. But it's to communicate and say, you're human, I'm human. I am enough. I matter, and so do you. If we only realize that in life, no matter what happens, you know, every sec, every race says, the other ones, they are great because they're united. Our culture is not united. They are great because of this or because of their schooling and their education or they believe they're higher than us and who do they think they are. If we can only stop and say, hello, my name is, I'm glad to meet you. It's so good to be present. It's so good to be here. Yes, 
My name is Lisa. And I do have an accent. Someone just asked me the other day. I hear an accent. And I said, thank you. Because who I am is a part of the conglomerate, the plethora of all my experiences, where I come from, who I am, my lineage, that I am proud. I was born in Iran. I am an Armenian. My religion I was christened as Catholic, and I grew up in an all-girls Catholic school. Yes, I know all about Catholic girls. Who I am now is more spiritual than anything else. But I do go to church. I believe in the universe and in God. When I do work with my clients, my friends, I work with gratitude I work with God, grace, patience. And I do talk about all the tchotchkes that I have. And I can do an incredible salsa and hee-haw because I'm a great country western dancer. Does that make me where my accent comes from? I speak three and a half languages, my Farsi, Armenian, English, some French, and the language of love, which I believe it's the most beautiful language, language of humanity, language of unity. And that is how we communicate, the language that you matter, the language that if you need me, and if I can be of help, I am here for you. Many years ago, I had a client call me. And most clients, when they call, they just want to do the consultation over the phone. And that's great. But I like to have my consultations at my office so they can come and see my office, get to meet with the, me in person. Yes, hear my accent, but it's not so much my accent. It's about how I can be of help. And then when they see my office, and today I'm going to turn the, uh, I've, this phone and show you just a little bit of my office. It's about encompassing all this, the place of safety, the place of security that I create with my clients. That it doesn't matter how I sound, but how I can help and be there for you to help you transition from one place to another, to make that change within you, to delve into your subconscious mind and to know that you are perfect with all the imperfections. So this client who called, he said, I want to know how much you charge and my issue is this, and he said what it is, and he said, do you, and this was the key, do you work with gay men? My response, I have dealt with that kind of an issue for so many years. I've been in practice for over 15 years, and yes, I can help you. Second, here are my fees. Third, and the most important one, I do not work with gay men. I work with all human beings. And you are one. I hope I can be of service to you. 
he signed up for seven sessions. And he was one of my biggest clients who referred others to me. So, how we communicate and how you can make your communication better. First and foremost, pay attention to nonverbal signals. Second, your body language speaks far more, far more louder than anything else. Be aware of your hand gestures and how calm you want to be. Because too much of hand gestures takes away from the message. Next, be confident in what you have to say. Another one, change your tonality in order for what you have to say with pauses, making it softer or stronger and making a point. You are in control of your voice. And one of the things that I say is listen. Allow another person to finish their thought before you jump in to finish their sentence. And the last one is not everything is about you. What others say is about themselves. They are revealing what they want to, you to hear what they want you to understand about them. So if you pay attention to, de, to, the, to what they are saying and how they are saying and stop making it all about you and remember they are human beings and they have feelings, they have their own thoughts and ideas. You will be much clearer in how you respond and feel good about yourself. I've been thinking about doing live for the next 33 days. I am challenging myself to go live from this day forward for the next 33 days from today all the way to my big event coming up, which is the 3E, 5th annual 3E coming up on March 11. So from today on, every single day, I will go on for approximately three to five minutes with daily affirmations or inspirations. My Tuesday Hill Talks will remain, but for the next 33 days, I will go live with a thought of the day, an inspiration of the day, or whatever gratefulness of the day that comes to me. For today, I thank you. Look forward to our next meeting next Tuesday. He'll talk with Lisa. For more information about my event, the fifth annual event, which is a day dedicated to women, Igniting the best in you. We've got an incredible ensemble of speakers, panelists, a vocal singer, a medicine man that is going to be there drumming, guided visualization, and taking you to another level of appreciating, exciting, accepting, and rewarding yourself for who you are. Go to my website and look for the message, the banner of 3E. And to close for today, remember to communicate. Call someone that you want to impact their life and say, Aho, you matter to me. Evoke what was. Embrace what is 
and let us evolve to what will be. Create it, desire it, and let us go manifest it. Until next week, you matter to me.